I want to go back to the muscle loss when people are dieting, when they lose that muscle. And this is happening with um, there's these new diabetic injectable drugs that are people people are using for weight loss. But what they don't realize is they're losing muscle and fat at the same time. And then when they try to get off the drug, they gain a whole bunch of fat back without getting their muscle. And that muscle is so expensive and amazing. You don't want to lose it. You've talked about this fat overshoot effect from dieting. So let's get into that and the, and the risk of losing muscle. Yeah. So listen to you, science, fat loss scientists, <laughs> you're using all the, <laughs> the research terms, the fat overshoot. So um, explaining that concept is a, f- a few studies have hypothesized that when we lose body weight, and this is particularly relevant when you, we go on a crash diet, losing fat very quickly, taking an extreme approach. So really low calories, tons of cardiovascular exercise, just in a big hurry, nothing sustainable about this. And so you lose a lot of body weight. And historically, when the diet ended, researchers would think that your body tends to gain body the body weight back. Your body will want to gain body weight back until the point where you have the same amount of body fat that you had before you started dieting. It's kind of, it's known as a lipostatic theory. And mo- several studies have challenged this and they, they've they said, we don't think that's what's happening. What Rather, what's happening is you lose a lot of weight quickly and in an unhealthy manner. What happens is when your diet's over, your body will want to gain body weight back up until the point where you um up until the point where you get, gain back the muscle that you lost when dieting so let me phrase that hopefully a little more simply after the diet's over if you've lost muscle mass particularly if you've lost a lot of muscle mass what happens is as soon as your diet is over you've now induced a state which is known as hyperphagia And that is an extreme drive to eat. It's really high levels of hunger. And a lot of people experience this. Again, think of your typical yo-yo dieter who's aggressive, crash dieting, that that particular history. So if you've lost a lot of muscle mass, your body will have an elevated and very aggressively enhanced drive to eat until you gain back the muscle that you lost prior to your diet starting. And the unfortunate thing here is the term that you described, it's called fat overshoot. A lot of people will end up gaining significantly more body fat onto their bodies while they're trying to just recover the muscle mass that they lost. So this is a situation where people, they actually have gained more weight after their diets in a short period of time than what they had before they started their diet. It's called fat overshoot. So my philosophy and what we research in my lab is if that if that theory is true, then we want to do everything we can to protect muscle mass during from day one. If if muscle helps control hunger and muscle helps prevent fat overshoot. And by the way, your metabolism is directly tied to your muscle mass. If you lose muscle mass, you're going to suppress your metabolism. Mm -hmm. So we want to protect those uh, very seriously from the first day of dieting. How do we do that? The first is a moderate caloric deficit, so we don't we don't embrace crash dieting um, routines. Higher protein, we already talked about that. And now we can bring in the second component, which is exercise. So there's two broad types. There's resistance training and aerobic exercise. We have a, a we place a, a, a focus on resistance exercise because that's the most anabolic stimulus for skeletal muscle. So when we're dieting, if you are resistance training, that's a stimulus to keep as much of that muscle mass as possible during the body body, uh, fat loss process. And my research for the last several studies, we've lost nearly 100% of body weight from fat stores and keeping and maintaining all muscle mass. Um, I do want to say this, Depending on the types of clients, if if I'm talking to a fitness professional audience here, or even if I'm talking to somebody who just hates resistance training, 
any type of activity will help maintain muscle mass when dieting. So if, if somebody's not going to resistance train, my response is, okay, that would be the best form. But if you're not going to do that, I don't want to twist your arm and make you do that. But can you walk? Can you do, can you do some, some type of activity outdoors? Can you get on the treadmill? Can you get in the pool? Any type of activity that's stimulating the skeletal muscle fibers will help them to maintain their volume, their size, and prevent this hyperphagia extreme hunger when your diet is over. I would love to know if you know what hormones are being triggered to cause that extreme hunger. Is it a, a crossing of the wires with leptin or ghrelin or is it cortisol or is it just the body going into a, a severe um, survival state? I need to store on as much fat as possible because I don't know when I'm going to go into a starvation mode again. Yeah, I, I typically I don't. My research line is not hyper focused on hormonal changes, but what we do know is that leptin, as you get as you lose body fat, and again, crash diets, you do lose body fat, but that's a if you're losing a lot of lean tissue along with it, that's typically not a good long term outcome. But leptin levels are get very low, as, especially as you get lower and lower body fat levels. Um, again. I've done research in lean people. So a, a lot of who I study are competitive bodybuilders and th their leptin levels have literally gotten to the point where they're undetectable. That's mm -hmm. how lean these people are. Um, the other thing that, that, uh, and let me also say when I'm talking about all this, so, well, some of the research I have done in my lab, so a lot of this other research, I'm just, I'm just um, talking about other people who have published research in this area. So I don't want anybody to think that I'm doing all of these studies. I, I I'm not. Uh, but I do read them. Uh, one thing we do know, there's a um, there's something called the growth hormone insulin like growth factor. So IGF-1. So the GH IGF-1 axis. And when we diet, that gets manipulated in an unfavorable way for anabolic activity in, in skeletal muscle. So typically when we diet, we have an increase in growth hormone. And that's a good thing because growth hormone is catabolic to body fat. So it breaks down body fat. And normally that growth hormone, if it gets higher, it will increase IGF-1 in the liver. And IGF-1, insulin like growth factor 1, is, is very anabolic to skeletal muscle. However, dieting, if it's extreme, it can impact this GH-IGF-1 axis where typically growth hormone goes up. So does IGF-1, and then IGF-1 will have a feedback loop to tell the, the pituitary gland, hey, stop producing growth hormone. We don't need it since it's already high. Well, what happens in that case is growth, when we're dieting severely, growth hormone continues to go up. IGF-1 is not produced at levels that it normally would be, and then we don't have this feedback loop. So growth hormone keeps getting higher and higher. And we don't have the IGF-1, which is, again, anabolic to skeletal muscle. So that's, we think, at least partly responsible for why we're losing muscle tissue when dieting with more of a, um, an aggressive approach. So there's some other hormones that a lot of, they're not really hunger hormones. They're more anabolic hormones.